The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. Some audio portions have been previously recorded. Live, it's the second annual Stinker Madness Achievements in Bad Filmmaking Award Awards Show. Who in Hollywood will win our top awards? Which movie will take home Best Bad Movie? Which movie is the worst of 2015? Find out here on Stinker Madness. Stinker Madness. Hello and welcome to the 2015 Stinker Madness Achievements in Bad Filmmaking Award Awards Show. We've got a very special show as we've sifted through an astounding 18 bad movies from 2015 up from 14 of last year. We've added three new categories, Least Funny Comedy, Worst Bad Actor, and Worst Bad Actress. In the studio tonight and here to help me dish out the awards is Stinker Madness co-host and 2015 World Dog Awards winner of Best Dog Sitter, Sando Sam the Sandwich Man. Hello. And the voice of all reason and sanity and most beloved Stinker Madness host, Dr. Jackie. Yes. And now I would like to sing you guys my award song. <clears throat> awards are great. They're for everyone. Awards. Yeah. Awards. Yeah. And we've got a very special guest with us tonight. All the way from Florida, it's friend of the Stinker Madness podcast, Brad Slager, a.k.a. Martini Shark. High honor to be here tonight, and I'm going to probably sidestep my usual of drinking during a broadcast and go with the champagne for the awards. This there year. you go. Well, I'm drinking whiskey, so uh, we're all kicking it off pretty good. Damn it. Okay. Um, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a break? No, no, I'll be, I'll be fine. Well, the excellent news is Jackie has food poisoning, so that makes it even more of a special night. I'm your host, Justin, and let's get this show going. As I mentioned, we watched 18 movies, of which you can find the entire list on our website. There you will also find our SMAPFA FAQ that will explain how we choose the movies and how the winners were determined. So with our very first award tonight is Brad with Best Bad Actor. And the nominees are... Ray Stevenson, Transporter Refueled, Eddie Redmayne, Jupiter Ascending, Paul Bettany, Mordecai, Rupert Friend, Hitman Agent 47, Jason Statham, Furious 7, Paul Walker, Furious 7. And as I rustle with the hermetically wax sealed envelope, and the winner Rupert Friend for Hitman, Agent 47. Why don't we start with your name? 47. That's not a name. No, but it is mine. What exactly are you? An assassin. And you're here to kill who? You should really let me go. Last time I checked, you're the one locked in here with me, and I'm the one with the gun. No, Mr. Sanders. You're locked in here with me, and you just brought me mine. Aha! That shook out well. That is, yes! That is a surprise. Is it really? Yeah. I loved him in that movie. Yeah, I would take that as a surprise as well. I, you know, here's the fun thing. I thought for sure Eddie Redmayne was a lock. Uh, just because I knew one of us didn't like him. Uh, I I had such a good time with him that I made him my number one pick. It was so atrociously bad. But I will say that I put uh, Rupert Friend in my top three. So, Yeah, I didn't even have him, really. I, I just out of left field. I just thought he was like, he was there. And I had Eddie Redmayne as my pick as well. He uh, he outscored everybody, the Rupert friend. Jackie, where did you put Rupert friend? He was number one for me. Yeah. Uh-huh. I uh -huh. really, really liked him. Well, Rupert friend had a uh, total score of 13 to Eddie Redmayne's 10. Ooh. So it was just that all of us put him on our ballot. And yeah, I had Eddie Redmayne very low because I... <laughs> <laughs> I uh, had him higher on a different list. Yes, <laughs> yes you did. 
<laughs> well, let's talk about the winner for a second. Rupert Friend, Agent 47. He uh, takes over for Timothy Oliphant from the Hitman series. I thought that he was... Uh, I liked that he was kind of a silent, uh, slower-moving version of John Wick's shoot everybody in the face as fast as I possibly can. He still shoots everybody in the yeah. face. It's just slower and quieter. It took me 15 minutes to realize he wasn't Orlando Bloom. Mm. I thought there was like, why did, Orlando, <laughs> why did Orlando Bloom shave his hair and what happened to his acting skills? Brad, uh, how did you feel about uh, Rupert Friend? Um, well, I thought he was more of a uh, more of a cipher, more of a uh, just kind of trying to populate that anonymous role. So he didn't really give me that uh, scenery chewing that Eddie Redmayne delivered. You know, I mean, Redmayne was just <laughs> much like the movie. He was just off the map in the margins the entire time and just no modulation. He would either be that hyper dramatic whisper and then he'd bellow and the whole time the facial gestures went with it. That's why he was my pick. I just uh, kind of just favored that, you know, he swung for the fences and he actually hit a foul ball into the parking lot. You know, it's like kind of <laughs> knocked out the kid with the peanuts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Basically he took out a vendor and then somebody's windshield. In the process. Going from uh, being Oscar nod for his role as uh, Stephen Hawking the year before to just like not even very long after the nominees for that came out. He's in Jupiter ascending doing a bad guy version of this and it stinks i mean mm. it is a serious fall from grace that is i mean it comes once every blue moon and how he didn't take it is just shocking to me well i just uh i, I was watching him and in the back of my mind i could see both of the wachowskis behind a camera waving forearms saying more more and yeah he delivered turn up the juice sir Jackie, your thoughts? Um, I voted for the other guy, so <laughs> I voted for Friend. So you Rupert for you? Yeah, for I, Rupert I don't Friend. know what you guys are talking about. I I thought Rupert Friend was just. I I just thought he gave a better performance than Jupiter Ascending guy, and I, I don't know. I just liked Hitman Forty Seven better. I thought it was like more like, oh my god, seriously. <laughs> And as I said before, I had him higher on the other list. Yeah, that that you you hating Eddie Redmayne's performance cost him best bad best actor bad, yeah maybe it did and but it was unfortunate because like in terms of the worst bad actor i just judged it in the craft that he came up with a bad idea and executed it worse yeah <laughs> that like i had to compare him to uh john depp and it was like he's doing ultimately worse yeah but it was enjoyable was i, I guess it was the whole this whole year is the bad movies has just been blah because when we watched Jupiter Ascending early on, it was like, oh, this is a favorite for best bad. And I don't even know if it made the list. Mm, it did. It's it's nominated. It's on the so. list. OK, yeah. well, it was up there. So the rest of the list shakes out in order. Uh, as we mentioned, Eddie Redmayne got a close second. Ray Stevenson from Transporter Refueled got a nice third, which I thought was a uh, that's where I think the majority of us put him. A lot of us voted for him uh, for second. Um, but uh, he, I just enjoyed his. Oh, hey, son, I'm kidnapped again. Routine. Can you come get me from these damn women that keep getting me? God damn it. I'm going to try to bang all of them, too. Just yeah, so you know, just so you know, I'm going to get drunk <laughs> and get handsy with all these girls who we should help so that I can get drunk and handsy. I liked him quite. I liked that movie a lot better than most of the bad movies this year. Yeah, yeah I thought he was great. I He reminded me of uh, a larger drunker version of bruce campbell's character from uh that spy show that was on tnt burn notice burn notice like yeah. he's just like wearing a white suit and like i'm living the good life ladies who wants me to pop another button open on my shirt huh and you never find out whether he's actually like a super spy or if he really did just sell boats or whatever it was yeah that was great uh to round out the final was uh, Jason Statham from Furious 7, and last but not least was Paul Walker, my number one. You fucking bastards. 
not giving the man his fucking due now that he's gone from us forever. Well, Paul Walker did, was uh, great in see, Furious 7. I thought he did good. That's why I didn't vote for him. Oh, he, he was, was such, mm, so He was good cheesy. acting. He was so cheesy. His brother. Climbing that, the bus? Are you kidding me? That was his brother. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. It should have been the other one. Yeah, been. I, should, I actually thought about writing that in, and I didn't. I didn't have Just the balls. Brian from Furious 7. Because his brother that had to do all the stunt sequences with the high knees was kind of ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jaggy? Yes. Any further thoughts on the, the final three? No. All right. Brad, do you have anything to say about the final three? Ray Stevenson, Jason Statham, and Paul Walker. Uh, Stevenson, I really enjoyed. You know, he had that greasy 60-year-old skirt chaser thing going, and nobody really questioned it. You know, you would see a runway model in her car, and you'd walk up and approach her, and no one thought, get away, Gramps. It was like everybody bought into it, and he just ran with it. A lot of fun watching it. It was pretty uh, pretty good performance. As for Walker, I didn't pull for him because I'm not a sentimental type. You know, I, uh, I'm not going to let that affect my judgment on a bad movie performance. It's more, you know, everybody was weeping over him and throwing accolades his way. It's like, no, no, come on. That's not uh, reflective of the performance in my book. So I bypassed that. I was more, uh, honestly, I was probably leaning more towards Kevin James playing the president. <laughs> because every time that happened, it was like, I'd see him behind the desk and like, wait, what? What? <laughs> Every single scene that appeared, and that was just cracking me up and not in the way that they wanted, that's for sure. Indeed. Good point, sir. Next up, we have Jackie with the worst bad actress. And the nominees are Teresa Palmer, Point Break, Sophia Vergara, Hot Pursuit, Kate Mara, Fantastic Four, Reese Witherspoon, Hot Pursuit. Julianne Moore, Seventh Son. And the winner for Worst Bad Actress goes to... This envelope is giving me trouble here. I looked at mine for later and it's like he <clears throat> sealed it with a heat gun. I know, it's like, what the hell? Reese Witherspoon in Hot Pursuit. What the heck is this white stuff? Baking Thank powder! You We're bikers. Toast, muffin, cakes. Muffin. I should call the police. No, I am the mother of the police. Don't you see? Uh, there's no major damage here. You're free to go. But I destroyed your car. I said you're free to go! Except I need you to drop us off at the nearest establishment where we can buy some clothing at a reasonable price, but more importantly, at a reasonable price. I said that before, didn't I? This accident's gonna be all jacked up. No, duh! I like. I hated the other one more. Oh, Sophia Vergara. God, I don't know how. It's that's a tough call, but man, Reese Witherspoon should have fucking known better. She should have known better. This is not a surprise to me. However, I personally voted Teresa Palmer much higher because she did as poorly as anyone I've ever seen in a movie <laughs> in my whole fucking life. I voted uh, Sophia Vergara. I hated her so much in that movie. She was so annoying. But I hated Reese, Reese Witherspoon just slightly less. So, I mean, I can't really complain about the winner. No, it, it was a dead heat in the Zeppelin, Zeppelin race between those three. Brad, you voted for Julianne Moore in The Seventh Son. Yeah, I was really, uh, really tough on this category. I've worked on this one. Julianne was, for me, I could see her trying at times and just not so much failing, but delivering nothing. And there's all this sweeping CGI action around her, and she just couldn't keep up with it. And it would just became halfway through the movie. I just started laughing more and more at her. I just enjoyed it. Reese, though, I was with it. You know, she uh, she failed mightily, kind of in two ways. You know, she was the straight woman, and it hurt to watch. And she was going for comedy, and that hurt to watch too. So it was kind of neck and neck between those two as far as uh, who failed more. And I just think, uh, ironically, Julianne was, uh, she failed against the CGI, I think is what it was. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a hard thing to act next to, period. But uh, we'll get back to Julianne more in a later category. But uh, as far as uh, Reese, man, I, th I put her as my number one. I thought she was annoying. Her slapstick wasn't funny. It was, uh, it seemed like she was trying way too hard to to stand out next to a woman that's you know the huge booby loud lady is is what it was it was like i've got to try to who who can be loudest in this film and she lost because she just can't be as loud but but she didn't that didn't stop her from trying so hard to be 
too loud and too annoying. I thought I thought she was god awful. I can say the same thing for her that I said for Eddie Redmayne. She came up, she invent came up with a bad idea and then executed the idea worse. What what was the bad idea that you think? Her character, like she came up with this character that sucked, and then she did a shitty job with it. <laughs> That's the problem. That's where I have no qualms with Reese Witherspoon winning worst because it was just horrendous. It was horrendous. It got a lot of votes. Uh, this was a this was a contested category for sure. You know, Dakota Johnson scored votes. Uh, uh, what's her name? Aubrey Peoples from Gem and the Hologram scored votes. I thought a shock that didn't even get in was Cassidy Gifford from The Gallows. She was painful to watch. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's kind of an amateur thing, so I can kind of forgive that one. I thought she was believable when she was crying. That's why I didn't vote for her. She did one good thing, so uh, I left her off. Yeah, okay. How about Kate Mara in uh, Fantastic Four as uh, Susan Storm? It was annoying, but not enough for me to be like, nah, I'm going to nominate you. It's just She was just such a blah performer that she was a slip through the crack. Yeah, she was like Hamlet Dinner Theater yeah. versus some of like being stabbed in the eyes. She was vanilla pudding on Wonder Bread. Yeah, versus like... Jalapenos on dog poop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say that I credit Kate Marrows for uh, it's probably knowing the backstory of how that whole movie production went off the rails. But yep. you could just kind of see it in her face that she did not want to be there after a while. It was just, Absolutely. She was just kind of saying, I think it was almost like when uh, when Beast Mode gave that press conference at the Super Bowl. I have to be here mm-hmm. or they're going to find mm-hmm. me. It was kind of that kind of performance. Yep, I, I couldn't agree more, whereas Reith, Re- Reese Witherspoon was there because she thought she was doing a good job and was not. So, next up we have another new category. The least funny comedy with Sam. And the nominees are Paul Blart. Mall Cop 2, Mordecai, Pixels, and Hot Pursuit. And the winner is, no surprise, Mordecai. Oh, man. What is it? Oh, moon of my delight. This is your own personalized sheikh of Araby who seeks admission into your tent. I have come to carry you off to the burning desert and work my greasy will upon you under the tropical stars. Send your camel to bed, damn it! My sheikh, does this mean you have excommunicated that moustache of the prophet? I'll trim it. (sighs) Darling, I am embarking on a very dangerous escapade from which I may not well return. And it is customary in these situations for, you know, proper send-off, quick session of Congress, sink the Bismarck, if you will. And by the way, did I mention it is a matter of national security? Yep, no surprise indeed. Uh, this was uh, a very not contested <laughs> um, category by any means. Uh, we uh, we should mention that we had to do this one this year because there was so few action, science fiction, horror movies to choose from in the Smab Fuzz and such an overwhelming amount of comedies this year that uh, we just had, as soon as we saw Mordecai, it was kind of like, oh, shit. Now we have to do all of the comedies to see if there's one truly worse than this. And there was there not. was not. It was as not funny as I'd ever seen anything. And I will say that I did vote in the one of the last categories for best bad actor. Uh, I did vote for Paul Bettany mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. despite the rest of it, what he was doing, I enjoyed. It's just that the rest of the thing was so not funny that it didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh- See, and I thought that his character was just kind of cliche. And if 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 you took an action guy that bangs all the ladies and then made him shitty, that's what you've done in Mordecai. And that's why I just didn't like it. It was just like this is a this is a character of things that I normally like. Paul Bentney's character, and he was the best part of the movie by far. I hated this movie so much. I'm glad it won. 
Well, it was no one liked it. It was just awful. <laughs> yeah, I was like, mm, craptastic movie. Well, there was one person who voted it not as high as the rest of us. Oh. Brad, you want to talk about your number one pick? Well, actually, um, I got to tell you, this category, it, it was kind of razor thin for all four, honestly. It was like 1A to 1D for me. And, uh, you know, I mean, with Mordecai, yeah, I mean, the, the, the fact that Bettany's character's name is Jockstrap, and that's played for laughs. That was, uh, his name is Jockstrap. Shut up. <laughs> you know, but, that's, uh, I think the case of this being based on a book from like, was it 1970? I think mm -hmm. it's source material. And the whole movie, it was like, yeah, I can see what you guys are trying to do. And they failed systematically. But I, um, I kind of felt the same way about Pixels, but had a lot more antagonism towards that. Because they just had this high, high concept script and did absolutely zero with it. And it was... Uh, Kind of what I leaned on, you know, to make a deciding factor there. Yeah, see, the the thing that I I don't think that Pixels is good. No, I don't think that Paul Blart Mall Cop Two is good. However, both of them at least made me laugh in a couple points. Pixels really got me with the uh, JFK shot first joke, and Paul Blart had some insufferable jokes in it. But the it was almost fifty fifty. It seemed like for every really awful joke. There was one that kind of was like, you know what? That's a really good dad joke. My dad would really like that, and uh, it's good enough for me. Uh, Mordecai had not a single moment where I laughed. Neither did Hot Pursuit. And the difference from Deal Breaker for me is that Mordecai was awfully annoying. It, it, was, it, was, it was just so goddamn annoying to me that it made me angry, which is the exact opposite of being funny. I put Mordecai as number one because I thought that it not only was unfunny, but the production seemed to celebrate itself. Like they thought that they were being, you could tell that everyone was thinking, is it too early to whisper Oscar mm -hmm. the entire time? I was like, no, this is shit. Absolute shit. It was, it was like, it reminded me of the love guru in its childishness. Uh, it didn't make fart jokes. It didn't make balls jokes, you know, oh, balls, penis, and farts like the Love Guru did, but it seemed like it was trying to make the same statements with its jokes as far as its delivery, you know, oh, look, he's got a silly mustache. That's a silly mustache. You should laugh at a silly mustache. Hey, we should beat this fucking mustache to goddamn death, even though it wasn't ever funny to begin with. Yeah. Well, you know, and there were hipsters out there that were thinking, I have that mustache and it's cool. I think even they were going, this movie sucks. I don't think anybody on the planet could enjoy this film. Well, see, that's where I would differ. I, I've got this little bit of a masochist bent about me that when there's this total failure of a comedy, that's when I really start to enjoy them. And that's what it had for me. It, this seemed like a bunch of Americans trying to make British humor. Yes. And not getting it. And they were trying to lay out the joke so obviously, like setting highway cones out to steer you right down it, and then they plow them all over and ruined everything. And it's just, I kind of enjoy that sort of thing. So it kind of edged out when I saw with Pixels, they just seemed to not even try. Where here, they were trying to be sweeping and failed miserably. Yeah, I think we can all say safely that all four of these comedies were not good comedies, and none of them will be missed. I will also add that I have not seen a good comedy in some time. Uh, Jackie and I watched Trainwreck, and that was uh, that was good. I haven't seen it yet. Yep, 2015's best comedy of the year. I also like that spy movie with um, Jenny McCarthy. Nope. Was that not 2015? Uh, Jenny McCarthy does not star in a movie in uh, 15 years. She stars in the anti-vaxxer movement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa McCarthy. Oh, wait, I, I thought we were voting on worst New Year's Eve ball TV presentation. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brad, you've got the next one with the MST3K most riffable, the easiest and most fun to make fun of film while viewing. And the nominees are Jupiter Ascending, Fifty Shades of Grey, The Last Witch Hunter, Point Break, Seventh Sun. And the winner for most rippable movie, the 
winner is Point Break. What are you doing here, Utah? What do you mean? I remember you. Your reputation. More balls than talent. Some said maybe that was why you were so good. Because you lacked fear. But what I saw in that wave yesterday, that was different. You lacked respect. There was no connection. There was no beauty. Maybe I'm chasing something, like you are. What do you think I'm chasing? You're chasing the aid. That's a myth. But the real question is, what are you after? Yeah, Point Break 2015's remake of Catherine Bigelow's bleh, film to begin bleh. with. It's very easy to make fun of. This it thing is, uh, man. If 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 those guys were still if this was a 1950s movie this would be one of their hottest episodes. <laughs> oh, absolutely! It, it it excels very well at doing nothing, which is a, a, the rippable movie has to have long gaps of just nothing, and this mm -hmm. has got plenty of them. There's a camping sequence that lasts 27 minutes. People going camping. People going camping for 27 minutes. The fun, how you can judge a, a riffable movie, in my opinion is you can riff any movie. I don't care if it's good, if it's bad. I don't care if it's fucking Schindler's List or The Room. Any smart, funny people can riff a, a movie. Now, the difference is how many people does it take to riff that movie? Because the more people you have riffing a movie, the easier it is. Point Break, you can watch by yourself yes. and crack yourself up. <laughs> Jackie? Thoughts on Point Break? This movie was super disappointing in the first place. And then... Uh, uh, what were you expecting? <laughs> I, I was expecting something a little bit better. But, you know, uh, overall, though, I, I would agree with this this selection. The Point Break nomination and winning is... I don't know. It, it seems right. It seems like it's feeling a groove with me. Uh, the Flying Squirrel sequence was very riffable. Uh, let's go rob a bank at the very top of a mountain. That mm -hmm. seems like a very good idea. Mm -hmm. Um Let's switch the main actor's hair colors to confuse people so that we look like we have a new thing going on. Let's get a hippie lady with some huge bolt-ons. Yep. To swim around with some shark reefs. And do some Dutch ovening. <laughs> <laughs> and jump off rocks. Yeah. Yep. Backflips. Brad, how how did uh, how did Point Break go for you? Oh, yeah. You're, uh, you're right about that. I mean, I think uh, you probably could have gotten 10 minutes of material just on the tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, yeah, definitely a lot there. I favor Jupiter Ascending here just for the sheer volume of material. I mean, it, it, that's a movie where you probably would have to pause it because they're just, you know, you get a Chandler Bing moment of two mini jokes. And, you know, it's to me, it was just overloaded and I loved it for it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but it was a pretty rich category. I thought this is uh, pretty strong this year for that kind of uh, content. Fantastic Four, I think you have a lot of the same valid reasons where there was just so much non-activity going on that, you know, begging for people to fill in the gaps there, too. Well, it's it's good that you mentioned Jupiter Ascending because we should mention that we had a tie for second place and Point Break barely won. The total score for Point Break was 13 points and the Two second placers was 50 Shades of Grey and Jupiter Ascending with 12 points each. So very, very yeah. close race in this. I think I voted 50 Shades highest. Yeah, we had uh, two people that really pulled for 50 Shades. I put it last because uh, I hated it is a whole, but uh, I do think it's uh, uh, also fairly riffable. riffable. But uh, Jupiter Ascending, you know, in my opinion, the three hours is a hindrance. Uh, for riffing, it's just too goddamn long. You get tired and start staring at the walls like I did. I just remember having a nice time when we watched Fifty Shades of Grey. That was what was keeping me awake, was making fun of it, and it was a multitude of material in which to. Uh, there was plenty of darts to, or plenty of boards to throw darts at in that film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So I was just gonna say, with Fifty Shades, the only reason I didn't pump it higher was it's kind of like picking on a deformed kid. You know, it's like 
<laughs> you knew it was going to be bad and it was really bad. And it's just like, it, it's kind of like you already, you could have written everything before you watched the movie, that kind of situation. Only reason I didn't go higher on it. Yeah, I, I can totally understand. I just, also the 14 minutes of that movie, I kid you not. And I'm not, I'm not pulling the stat out of the air. 14 minutes of it is sex scenes. Uh, so that's, you kind of just go, when are the sex scenes going to be over? What, once the acting and the dialogue starts up and stupid shit's going on, you can riff, but, uh, you know, there's only so many weird boob jokes you can make during 14 minutes of sex scenes. Uh, I don't think your boobs were that weird. Well, they're just not very good, but I mean, that's the joke you make. Oh, weird boobies. (laughs) Well, it's not even that funny of a riff. So suck it. (laughs) <laughs> well, I mean, there's always the hey i remember these yeah because yeah, they come out so often yep i made a painting of those boobs a lot in between now and the last time and last but not least was last witch hunter with nine and seven son with eight which i liked both of those movies i i thought they were both entertaining and funny those those two were both on my list i i liked both of those a lot I don't even remember what happened. At Seventh Son, it was super unmemorable for me. Yeah, it is unmemorable. Uh, it, 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 both of these films are a little too busy for me for for riffers. Uh, there's a lot of things going on that that they're they're kind of hard to keep up with, even if you really are paying attention, because the the plots are just dumb and don't make any goddamn sense at all. So you're struggling to like, what is Vin Diesel trying to accomplish in this movie? Why does Jeff Bridges have such a serious beard? Is magic is both of them that you just, there's not zingers coming to my mind every five seconds on, on either of them. One of the things that I had a problem when I didn't go very high on last witch hunter, even though I thought it was, eh, I would get caught up in the photography being good and I wouldn't be able to make fun of it. Like mm-hmm. sometimes like it wasn't the, the photography through the whole thing was brilliant, but there were certain sequences and certain shots. I was like, wow, that's a really good job. Like why isn't any of the other part of parts of the movie this good, but that it was distract. Like some of sometimes it would be uh, competent enough that I couldn't make fun of it. Yeah. Well, your winner is point break, as we said. And I think that's uh, I think that's a good one. Yeah, I think that's I think the even though I didn't vote at the highest, I have no qualms. Next up is Worst Bad Actor, the least enjoyable performance by a male actor. And the nominees are Johnny Depp, Mordecai, Eddie Redmayne, Jupiter Ascending, Edgar Ramirez, Point Break, Jeff Bridges, Seven Son, Ryan Shoes, The Gallows. Jackie? And the winner for Worst Bad Actor is... I swear you did something weird in these envelopes. I cannot get mine open. I opened the bottom. It was easier. (laughs) Oh, okay. Next time. And the winner is, which is no surprise because I hate this fucking movie, Johnny Depp and Mordecai. I am Mordecai, Lord of Silverdale. I should like to request a bucket of ice, do not disturb sign, and a bulldozer. Checking in? Yeah, we're checking in. I suspect that I may need to redecorate. Room 326 overlooks the pool. So all I must do is show up and I'm presented with a credit card. No wonder your country's in financial ruin. Do you need help with your bags? No, I do not need help with my bags. I have a bloody manservant. I was pulling for Eddie. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you were. Unfortunately, you were the only person that voted for Eddie Redmayne as worst bad actor. Uh, Who the hell voted for the seventh son guy? Uh, well, who did vote for the seven son Jeff Bridges guy, Brad? I don't know. He sounds like an ass, though. That's yeah, what sure. a dick, dude. That would be me. That would be me. I really. Are you telling me you like that performance? I just I felt completely indifferent to I, I was disappointed by Jeff Bridges bad performance because I wanted him. I, I went in thinking he was going to be the dude that's a wizard. And he just was mumbly throughout the whole thing. It wasn't good. But uh, stack next to the I want to punch Johnny Depp in the face so goddamn hard performance. It just it had no contest. And I think an unspoken one that uh, did actually get a, li- a lot of uh, street cred was that Ryan Shoes guy, because I also wanted to punch him right in the annoying. fucking face. Oh, that was I'm with you on that one. That was, that was my close second pick. And uh, 
Yeah, I, I hated him from the onset, which is a really clever move by a director of a horror movie. So people root for his death. And then, spoiler alert, when he actually uh, gets shot off the ladder and fractured his leg, I actually laughed out loud with pleasure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But the, he, he, you do that in a lot of movies where, I mean, it, to make theater or audiences not feel so shitty when they, you know, oh, that guy died. Well, now I'm an asshole because I rooted for a guy to die. You can't make a, the character this shitty where you're just like, I want to leave this theater because I can't stand this particular actor. You can't make people walk out of the goddamn movie. And that's what I wanted to do with Ryan's shoes. Yeah. When he fell off the ladder, I was like, it's a, it was, I was exhausted by that point by him. And then I was like, mm -hmm. it's about fucking time. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to go and actually step on his leg at that point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he had a real punchable face in my opinion, but uh, the most punchable as we decided and uh, clear cut, no surprises here, Johnny Depp and Mordecai. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will say that I didn't vote him as high. I know he was, he was super annoying, but I didn't vote him as high because I felt like he was just doing the crap he always does. Whereas I thought that, Eddie had invented a bad character and then performed it miserably. Well, I think I think that uh, Johnny Depp has invented a bad character. It's just the same bad character he's had for 20 years. Yeah. But this time he really turned it to 11. <laughs> he said that I don't know if it was the script that the script was so shallow or if it was him. And he said, well, I just I've got a really jump it up so that people notice this Mordecai, you know, I mean, why Mordecai, why this film did he take that Johnny Depp and turn it to fucking 11? It's almost like, like I said earlier, the film celebrated itself. It's like, he'd been waiting for this to come around. Like, Oh, this is the one that I can turn it all the way on. It's going to be great. I just, I don't get the character. I don't get why he's a wanker because I mean, are we supposed to like this character? He's a fucking wanker. I hate this character. And I, I mean, I think John Depp was the guy to play him because he totally made him less likable. Yeah. So are we, uh, is that it? Are we not supposed to like Mordecai? I don't know. I think you're supposed to like him. I think that's why this movie failed so miserably. And this performance was such shit is because I think you're supposed to like him. I think you're supposed to root for him to be able to save yeah. his house and whatever the hell he was trying to do grow out his sweet mustache i i think you're supposed to like him i think you're supposed to be behind him you are he's look at that funny clever man look at that silly british guy he's he's playing by his own rules and oh he is right about that mustache uh, just terrible yeah well he was supposed to be a lovable rake that's i think what they were aiming for you know like the comedic anti-hero and you're supposed to be on his side anyway and the reason i'm not so antagonistic is because he literally fails to deliver from start to finish with this character. And I just enjoyed watching him fail after a while. And just, no, no, keep on, bring us more, bring us more. I want to see you screw this up. It, it is nice to see the world finally stand up and say, you know what, John Depp, we've had enough. <laughs> You're going to have to do something else. And I, I heard later in the year, he was freaking great in that uh, black mass movie or black shaft or black, Black, I'm a gangster guy going to punch you in the face and then shoot your kneecaps movie. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the one where they give him like the white albino look. He's the albino guy, he's, right? He's the, the <laughs> no. He's, I thought he was the albino guy. He's like he's, a blue eyes. He's, and he's a got gangster. white hair. He's just the New York 70s gangster guy. Oh, I thought that guy was an albino because that's kind of what his makeup looks make him look like. Is this it? Is this the racist part of the show? Yeah, it's just this is just Jackie. Just Jackie. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, Mordecai, no surprises. Uh, so far, that's uh, that's two winner for uh, Mordecai. So uh, it was terrible. It was uh, real bad. Next up is best bad actress with Brad, and the nominees are Emma Stone, Aloha, Dakota Johnson, Fifty Shades of Grey, Julianne Moore, Seventh Son. Rose Leslie, The Last Witch Hunter, Juliette Lewis, Jim, and The Holograms. And the winner for the actress we enjoyed the most comes out to be Rose Leslie in The Last Witch Hunter. 
Aha! Surprise pick! It is a surprise, but at the same time, she didn't do a good job and I enjoyed it. (laughs) Yeah, I really enjoyed her character. I enjoyed how not okay it was. I was just like, dude, this is awesome. Well, what's interesting is that the film's producers and marketers must not thought of the same as we did because uh, there is not a clip on the internet that I can find that has a single line of dialogue from Rose Leslie. There's plenty of scenes with her uh, doing stuff, you know, looking cool and making whoa faces, but uh, not any dialogue that I can spice into the show. So, yeah, sorry. Well, this was also a very very hot debate we had a tie uh, like we had to do this one twice because the ties were so many and i will say that uh rose leslie barely beat out julianne moore by one point and then everybody else tied with emma stone juliette lewis and dakota johnson all coming in third place so still very hotly debated i I think that it's just because nobody really I don't know if anybody really stood out for me as being awesomely bad. I mean, Rose Leslie wasn't good. Julianne Moore wasn't good. And that's kind of what you got. I thought the gal, and I already forgot her name, because my first three, when we cause we had to do the ballot twice, because and I was really an outlier on this one, is all three of the girls from The Transporter. I liked them. They were terrible actresses. And then they were jiggly and on the screen. It was fun for me. Yeah. Whoever the front, who the front runner of that gang of uh, squishy goodness, I liked her the best. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like they split the vote. Even, even yes, they did. Uh, I could see in Sam's votes they went one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Yeah, the one that had the most lines got the nod. And the <laughs> only job, reason, Sam. the only reason that you didn't vote for the fourth one is because you couldn't figure out what her goddamn name was. <laughs> But uh, here's the problem with what you're saying. There was a fourth one. Yeah, there was four, four blonde remember. ladies. I couldn't even. It was like, goodness. I may as well be Ray Stevenson. <laughs> there was, oh, did I sleep with the same one twice or was that a different girl? And that's the number one problem with what you argued and what you voted for is even if one of them had won and we announced it, I would go, Sam, who won that award? And you go, uh, squishy goodness. Yeah, it was the lead one, the top. <laughs> oh, the lead one. Yeah, yeah, the one that the banged the guy. Yeah, not Ray Stevenson. <laughs> all the other ones. Yeah. Well, Rose Leslie came in first. Uh, surprisingly, she received no number one votes, but because she, uh, everybody put their on, put her on the list. She's number one. She was on my list. Yeah, even originally. Yeah, originally she was on my list as well. Yeah. What did you guys like? Uh, Jackie, I'm going to I'm going to put you on the spot and say, what did you like about Rose Leslie in The Last Witch Hunter? I just like that face that she makes when she's sort of kind of confused about what's happening around her. And like, she seemed confused a lot. Like this is in the script, right? I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> and then she just kind of would make some action moves and then move to the next scene. Definitely. Sam? She just looked confused most of the time. Mm-hmm. Like she was... I like between cuts, she'd be like, what is this picture about? What's going on here? Am I supposed to be looking this way? Which way am I looking? I've never Where's played my Dungeons mark? and Dragons. Brad, uh, your thoughts on Rose Leslie. Yeah, she had, um, she just definitely appeared at times to either be confused about what was in the script or that she was trying to pretend what was in front of her looking at the director saying, is this where the dragon goes? Is that where the witch is at? What am I supposed to do next? She just looked baffled from start to finish. And, you know, you bring up a good point about the CGI is I can't think of a really, I mean, if she does very much CGI work in Game of Thrones, it's minimal. She's mostly running around with the other wildlings and Jon Snow. Like, there, she doesn't fight a dragon. She doesn't really deal with the uh, the White Walkers very much, she may not have any experience with working with CGI and an actor that's not there on screen, but she just looked dazed and confused the whole time, and it was great. I think she actually had this look on her, like she kept asking Vin Diesel when the cars are going to show up. He was like, this isn't one of the fast movies. Yeah. You're not in a fast movie. (laughs) And then she was just like, wait, okay, so the cars are coming tomorrow? Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, folks, we come to the two big ones. Jackie, I want you to tell me what is the worst bad movie of 2015? The movie we enjoyed 
the least. And the nominees are Hot Pursuit, Mordecai, Aloha, Fantastic Four, The Gallows. And the winner for Worst Bad Movie is... Can you feel the drama? Oh, I got it upside down. That doesn't help. The winner is Mordecai. I am Lord Charlie Mordecai. Respected by all who know me slightly. Excellent show, sir. Man down. I am an art dealer and aficionado. <laughs> My wife, Joanna. My only true love. I thought I'd see how you secret agent men run the world. I'm afraid I shall have to put my foot down, darling. Sorry. With your permission, of course. Jock is my manservant and handles all of our most pressing affairs. Well done, Jock. I am also on the verge of bankruptcy. And therefore, we need a fiendishly clever plan to secure our reward. We grab the painting when no one's looking. No surprises there. Again, Mordecai is just, that's three for Mordecai tonight. There's only eight categories. Mordecai, you're. It was a, it's, it's, you know, it's a sweep for Mordecai, really. Yeah. It's got everything it's been nominated for. Indeed. What more can we even say other than, uh, yeah, I, I just don't know. I mean, I, I, I do really, I, I, I think Brad has some really good thoughts and, comments but i just can't get behind it brad i have i have no interest in ever watching this movie again i would like it to have i want to be reimbursed that two and a half hours of my life (laughs) well see that's and again i i differentiate myself freely i don't i don't mind that because i i savor that failure aspect of things you know when they try so hard and fail start to finish that's when I'm on board and laughing myself. It's, it's kind of like Catwoman where you guys all couldn't stand it. And that's a classic for me. Same kind of principle where there's just that much effort behind it, all that earnestness and none of it works. And I was laughing. I, 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 it's on one of my, I nominated it in the bad movie that I enjoyed because of that. You know, it's, that's just where I'm at. Freely admit it. I'm the outlier. That's all right. That's why we have you involved. Uh, let's talk about uh, some of the other ones, because in second place, barely, well, not barely, but uh, Mordecai got 13, score 13. Aloha came in second. This was my pick. With I, number, with 10 points. I, again, like the same thing I had with Eddie Redmayne. I didn't, I mean, I hated Mordecai. I was insulted by Aloha. I was infuriated by Aloha. Aloha was my number one as well. I just could take it or leave it. It was so blah to me that I just didn't give a shit about it. So this, I don't even think this one made it on my list. No, um, Sam and I are the only people that voted for Aloha. Pretty much one more vote would have put it over, over. Mordecai. But uh, yeah, it, it, it pissed me off. It, it, it said to me, this is how life is and this is how things are and this is how you should be. And then- Fuck you for telling me who I should be, you fucking dick. Well, yeah, it was like, ah, oh, I'm I'm Cam- I'm Cameron Crowe. I'm going to tell you about life. And it's like, have you been outside and ever talked to another human have being? Have you ever gotten a coffee ever? Just go to Starbucks one time, get a coffee and talk to a stranger. See how they speak. They don't speak like this, asshole. And the science fiction twist at the end was like something out of Omni magazine in 1984. Yeah. Like his understanding of technology was non-existent. Mm hmm. Well, one movie we all voted for, The Gallows. It got la- it got last, but every single one of us tossed in a vote for The Gallows. It just wasn't I hate shaky camera movies, mm-hmm. and that's what this one was, and it was annoying to watch, but I will agree with Brad that there when that guy fell off the ladder and broke his leg, mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, there we go." Um you know, you wanted these people to get killed because you knew that that's where the movie was going. And, and you knew that as they were getting killed off, the movie was getting closer to ending. So, yeah, there was no surprise. It was no like, oh, and the twist continues at the end. You knew what was going on. Yeah, the twist. Ooh, hey. boy, what I want is, you know, it didn't work for Chubby Checkers and it doesn't work for me. 
the twist. Yeah, well, I know. <laughs> yeah, dude, I never I got, got the joke. It just wasn't funny. <laughs> hey, did you write pixels? <laughs> I might have. I might have. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if he twirled his mustache as he said that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Brad, you uh, you once again threw another movie under the bus that wasn't Mordecai. You want to talk about your number one? Um, yeah, I was uh, I was leaning on Seventh Son because that was just no compelling reason to watch it, no compelling performances, no fun to be had, and you know I, I don't know how many stupid monsters they could trot out to try to save the proceedings, and each one of them just failed, and there there was really nothing about it that. You know, I would look at it and say, yeah, let's go through that again. Nah, pass. See, and I disagree with you. I liked all of those things. I liked the stupid monsters. I liked that the first apprentice got burned up like almost immediately. That was speaking, pretty funny. Speaking of Jon Snow from uh, <laughs> Game of Thrones, it was like, oh, Jon Snow's in this movie. Then five minutes later, Jon Snow was not in this movie. I didn't even remember he was in this movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wait, that's Jon Snow. Oh, bye, Jon Snow. I-, I liked all the pageantry of this movie. I I didn't vote for this one for the worst movie because I, I was entertained. See, I could, I didn't vote for it because I couldn't tell you one thing that happened in it. It was yep. just like the other ones made me hate them. Mm-hmm. Like I hated Aloha. I hated Mordecai. Mm-hmm. I, with the seventh son, I just like, I forgot like five minutes later, you could have said, we just watched seventh son. And I've been like, what, what movie did we just yeah. watch? Yeah. No, I was going to say the whole, you know, if I was going to describe seventh son as a color, it would be gray. Yeah, and that's it. There's nothing to it. Whereas in Aloha, you know, for me, I laughed at the ass bug. You said the life lessons he's delivering and he's going to talk to common America. No better way of communicating to everybody by setting military characters on Hawaii. We all can identify <laughs> oh, with yeah. that. Ooh. You know, that's, <laughs> There's a demographic that fits all of the world. That's the kind of failure I love where Seven Sun was just, I mean, it was paint by numbers and they used one color. Mm-hmm. Yes. But there were 50 shades of them. Oh, God. Oh. 50 shades only got one vote, and it was from this guy. Uh, we did not talk about uh, the third place, Hot Pursuit. Do we have to talk about that? No, we don't have to talk <laughs> about Hot Pursuit. Just Fuck that, you, Hot Pursuit. It really wasn't funny in any way. and uh, It didn't even excel at being bad. Yeah, it just was. It's bad. It just didn't excel at it. Yeah, I didn't, you know, it's like, I didn't laugh once at mm-hmm. Hot Pursuit, but I didn't laugh once at Mordecai, and Mordecai hurt my feelings a little, <laughs> so it couldn't even, couldn't even pass Mordecai. I think I would describe Hot Pursuit as pulling a fire alarm with a high heel shoe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we come to the big moment, the final award of the evening for Best Bad Movie the most enjoyable bad movie. And the nominees are Paul Blart, Mall Cop 2, The Transporter Refueled, Furious 7, Jupiter Ascending, The Last Witch Hunter. Sam. And the winner is Jupiter Ascending. You've been taught that the birthplace of the human race is Earth, but it's not. Do you know what this will do to people when they find out the truth? I don't think that most people would want to know the truth. I do. Your planet was seeded by a brass axe industries roughly 100,000 years ago. It's one of the most powerful dynasties in the universe. There are three primary heirs. The oldest is Belem. He's the one that controls this planet and wants you dead. I am telling you, I am nobody. You are royalty. What about the girl? Still alive. Bring her to me. Same genes reappear in the exact same order. It is what you call reincarnation. Her Majesty's life is going to change if she wants it to. I'm still the same me. Right now, Balem owns the title to Earth. Once you claim it, the Earth will belong to you. I will harvest that planet tomorrow before I let her take it from me. 
Have you ever seen a harvest? Never. But I've heard they feel no pain. You should have told me the truth about why you wanted her. Not anymore. Your Majesty, I have more in common with a dog than I have with you. I love dogs. I've always loved dogs. Here we go. Yay! Much fanfare. I feel vindicated. You know, when we watched this at the theater, I walked out of it and I, I thought for sure this was hands down worst picture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It had won at that moment. And then the rest of the movies happened. Because <laughs> <laughs> I did not like this, but it, well, in comparison, in comparison, it did something. Mm-hmm. It failed miserably at it, but it tried to do something. Right. And that's, you know, the same idea that Brad's saying, like, when you're failing miserably, it can be enjoyable. And that's what it did. It failed miserably at at least trying something. So the thing about Jupiter Ascending is I'm with you. I walked out of that theater just going, God, three hours. Are you kidding me? And I still feel very strongly about the wrong t- runtime. I think if you had a, a good pair of scissors, cut this down to an hour and 45 minutes at most. I think this could have been one hell of a good time and it would have like we would be talking about this for a long time, but uh, it's just too goddamn long in my opinion. But as the year went on and more and more people had seen Jupiter ascending and started making jokes about Jupiter ascending and the sky roller skates, the light up sky roller skates and the, the, the stupid line where she says, you know, he's like, he's like, I have more common with a dog than with, with you. And she's like, I love dogs. I've always loved dogs is, and it's so stupid and laughable in these brief periods of like explosions of stupidity that there's a lot of like, as time goes on, this movie kind of grows on you without you even watching it because you you're like, yeah, that was really stupid. And now I'm laughing at it. Well, my movie didn't win. I really liked Agent 47. Hitman, for, Agent 47. <laughs> Hitman, Agent 47. Yes, thank you. I I really liked this movie. I thought the guy was endearing, and I thought it was ridiculous, and I thought all the, the action stunts, especially when the guy falls down in the fight scenes and they land on, like, railings and stuff, I thought that was just great. So I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that my, my guy didn't even get a nod. Well, he did sort of dark horse the best actor. So, I mean, Hitman Agent 47 did that because I never mm-hmm. saw. I thought that was going to be one of the ones that we just didn't talk about at all during the show. Yeah. Um, yeah. Brad, your thoughts on Jupiter Ascending? Because I know that you voted Jupiter Ascending number one as well. Yeah, this was, uh, I'm sure, you know, you all know about that moment when a movie comes out and your eyes, you know, when you see trailers or something, your eyes pop open. You're like, no way it's going to be that bad. And then. You go to see it, it actually exceeds expectations. I mean, this this delivered, and that's it, it. Just got to be more stupid, more ridiculous, and more deliciously so the whole way through. And I just loved it for that. You know, I I said, "Oh, this is going to be a disaster," and it was a monumental disaster. It's a stack of pancakes that falls onto your lap as you try to eat them, and then somehow when you try to eat them off your lap they get back on the plate and you're like how did you even get back on the plate pancakes yeah yeah <laughs> well i think it's a good choice i think a lot of people are going to be really happy with that uh i uh i personally uh, you know i didn't vote for it as number one i voted for furious seven uh call it what you want i thought it was a bad movie and i thought it was the best and most entertaining bad movie i saw all year but uh uh Fur- jupiter ascending will go down in history as a uh a huge train wreck it's of something. a disaster. So there you go. Uh, to round out the last of them, uh, Paul Blart got in at uh, fifth place, and the transporter re- refueled took uh, took fifth. So 
I'm really surprised that Paul Blart got anything. That movie suck OLED. <laughs> yeah, but Jackie, <laughs> suck OLED. You laughed a couple times in it. <laughs> yeah, but the Last Witch Hunter was better movie than that. I didn't vote for Last Witch. I wish Last Witch Hunter got second place. But I, I just thought that, that was the same thing that everybody else is saying about uh, Seventh Son. I thought it was painted in gray. I just yeah. was like, Bleh. I liked it. I liked that one a lot. Yeah. Well, I got uh, got some votes. So was No Escape the only film that didn't receive any nominations on uh, the list? That is correct. No Escape was the only one because we don't have a most racist towards Asians <laughs> award. Uh, but if we did. Yeah, No Escape clearly would have won. Well, Mordecai probably, we still would have found a way to vote for Mordecai. If, if we had that. <laughs> on the original, because we had to do the, I think, worst bad actor ballot twice of the tiebreakers mm-hmm. my original ballot had brosnan on it yeah pierce, we should mention pierce brosnan he was, was terrible uh, really really stinky in uh in I, that i liked his performance in that one it was funny yeah it, it, was, <laughs> but it wasn't supposed to be it was hokey for sure but uh we'll have the entire rundown of uh all the people that received votes on uh the website as well but uh so there you go. Um, what have we got uh, for uh, next year? Is there is do you guys have any movies that uh, you're really really thinking is gonna do something in the Smabfas in 2016? Oh, that God's movie, Gods of Egypt. Yeah, with uh, Gerard Butler and a bunch of CGI dragons. Yeah, and Jamie Lannister. Oh yeah, Jamie Lannister. Jamie Lannister, whose real name is too hard to say. Yeah, that's right. So I'm just calling him Jamie Lannister. Yeah, that comes out in like uh, next next Friday, I think, or maybe today. Yeah, I'm I'm stoked for that one. I think that one is gonna going to be another jupiter ascending sweeping type motion maybe i could see it being like uh seventh sun or the opposite argument last witch hunter where it's just too much goddamn cgi so sam who, who what are you looking for i don't know to? if there's anything going i haven't seen it yet i have not seen my my darling my horse is not yet in the race well i'm wondering if zoolander 2 isn't going to fall into that bad comedy but um I'm I'm looking at also is it London Falling? That looks like that's got a chance yeah, of uh, yeah. not working. Yeah, London has that's fallen is, of a, is high on my uh, to do list. Zoolander two is getting a ton of negative press online. That uh, th- there's already people declaring it the winner of the worst movie of 2016. Period. Like end of story, and it hasn't. Nobody's even seen it yet. So uh, an overwhelming majority of Twitter users are saying that. So. Mm. What uh, what about the uh, sequel to Fifty Shades of Grey? Is that one coming uh, out? That's, that's not this year. Seventeen, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. We got Independence Day two. Oh, yeah. Roland Emmerich. There's Batman versus Superman right around the corner too. There is. That looks like it's not going to be good, and it's I sticky. don't know how they're going to make money on it because they keep buying these Super Bowl commercials and everything else that costs mm-hmm. all of the cash. They spent over two hundred and fifty billion or two hundred and fifty million on the production, and it seems like they've already equaled that in marketing. Yeah, this is just going to be a disaster. I hope. I think they're hoping to sell some Wonder Woman merchandise. <laughs> oh, you think they're hoping? I, I think honestly, I think that's what they're kind of banking on. Is that the, there haven't the been a Wonder lot Woman of... merchandise is going to bail them out of their four hundred million dollar hole that they're in? Oh yeah, yeah. I don't think so, Jackie. I think they're going to sell lunch pails. And yeah. coffee mugs, yeah. mm-hmm. and I love Wonder Woman T-shirts. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be a thing. I think mark I'm, my words, I'm it's going to detect- be a thing. I hope I'm detecting sarcasm from you. <laughs> uh, we've also got the Huntsman, Winter's War, the sequel to uh, 2013's shitty Huntsman movie. What? What? I Ooh. thought that they sewed that thing up pretty nice at the end. What yeah, are they going to do now? I don't know. Just more Kristen. What is it? Bell? No. Yeah, Chris she's Stone, not in uh, it. Kristen Stewart. Kristen Stewart. Kristen Stewart and, is not in the new one. Yeah, Charlize Theron is. Yeah, and um, and uh, that handsome hunk guy. Chris Hemsworth, Hemsworth, yeah. Yeah. There's also The Conjuring 2 coming up with uh, the guy that directed Fury 7, Justin, uh, not Justin Lin, the other one, uh, that also did the uh, Insidious movies. Yeah, I can't remember that guy's name. Yeah, those that's going to suck. And then last but not least on my list is Now You See Me Too, directed by the same guy who brought us craptastic Gem and the Holograms. So that's going to suck. Wow. I don't know who asked for that movie, but... Uh, I'm going to cry, aren't I? When yeah. I watch that oh, one yeah. again. Yeah, Now You Tears See Me Too. Tears of anger. They're going to they're, they're ruin Now You See Me 1 for you. <laughs> Probably not. Well, great show and a full year for sure. Uh, I want to thank Brad for joining us tonight all the way from Florida and all of his efforts to make this a great show. Thank you very much, Brad. No, absolutely. Thank you for having me on. Honored to be a part of it. 
Loved it. I also want to thank my co-hosts for suffering through a lot of crap to get some to just a little bit of good. Uh, lastly, I want to thank our fans. We love having you and we love hearing from you. Please, please share your thoughts on the Smavfuzz and how you would have voted. Join the discussion on our website, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you and get to the chopper. I carved every little divot in this thing <laughs> just to make myself happy. And so now I am. <laughs> no, I am. Um, uh, no, I'm not good at this stuff. Anyway, I'm very honored to receive this, and I'm. Uh, I don't. I'm not a big. Uh, I just don't think. You know, I probably said about seven sentences I didn't finish, probably, right? <laughs> it it's like stuttering, stammering, I don't know. I haven't really diagnosed it yet, but... Um, I've been so lucky to get away, to have been able to get away with what I've gotten away with over the years. And it's not like, I got away with this for seven years. It's been 30 years, man. <laughs> Which is nuts, you know. Um, but I, the whole time, you know, I, I realized very early on that uh, I wouldn't be getting any gig anywhere if there wasn't somebody who, who said, yeah, I know he's weird, but, but I kind of like that movie doesn't mind. He, like, no, he doesn't care. No, he knows like 17 people saw it. He's really okay about it. You know how long I had to put that act on for? <laughs> uh, the people, the people who, who, who I met outside and who I've been lucky enough to meet outside uh, across the globe who have supported me and who's, who've gone down that really ignorant road that I chose to go down. Um, I'm so proud that uh, I've been, that they trusted me and they uh, still watch the stuff and they still keep me employed and I'm very, very lucky that I have people like Tracy. <laughs> that poor thing is put up with so much. And then beyond that, imagine the phone calls that 